are back in the kitchen here. My favorite place to be. This is Hot Plate and I'm your host, Claire Carato. And I'm Chef Bennett. We are excited to have you join us on another episode of A Great a Food Experience. Now, for those who have not joined us before, this is Hot Plate and we'd like to welcome you. Basically, what we do is create recipes that you are able to recreate in your kitchen. Every single ingredient is locally available, meaning that you can be able to easily recreate this meal in your very kitchen. Mm. Um, we do have guests joining us and of course you our very own viewers joining us into the kitchen and cooking with us first of all i'd love to big i'd love to make a very big shout out to all those who stop us say hi to us tell us they love the show send us messages try our recipes maureen being one of them a big shout out to you and of course all the lovely people that we get to meet um you know out there who sure. always recognize and say that we love the show mm. we love you and we appreciate you so much thank you for that all right so chef has um something up his sleeves like he always does <laughs> and 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 i'm a bit happy about this because of the fact that it's been or rather we're getting to the cold season mm, really and yeah. we are right mm. sort of kind of no because it's usually worse usually in july i yeah. feel like uh, it's, it's, it's for real for real because by now it's usually raining yeah. it's cold and but so we have some peeps of sun you know coming out mm. so it's, it's still very confusing yeah. like are we very still, wet are we not we're not sure we're not sure but yeah. we're not sure but we're not sure but and by the way, FYI, I used to hate sleeping in socks. Like in a squeezy, in a tummy, yeah, in a tummy, in a tummy, in a tummy. Yeah, you know. I never get it. Right, but now I get it. I'm a, I don't know, maybe it's an age thing. Maybe it's an age thing. I, I never used to understand it. My mom said, you just wait, you grow older, you start feeling cold. And I'm like, shh. Sure. <laughs> now I get it. Be young forever. <laughs> right? Mm. Young forever. Mm. All right. So, Chef, who's joining us on set today? Okay. So, joining us is a researcher by profession, but she's doing other things right. on set. Right. She's called Patricia Andong Andango. Yeah. Did I get she's it? Gonna yeah, I didn't butcher that. Did you? And Jago, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Please join us on Karibu. the set. Welcome thank so you. much to Hot Plate. We're excited, We're excited to have you. Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you for joining us. Thank All right, now Chef is going to serve you a drink. We're going to ask you to kindly have a seat. Thank now, you. I am so excited about the term researcher. What is it um, that you research exactly and um, what does that entail? Um, I do consumer and market research, which Wonderful. is basically about understanding um, Understanding the African market, so yes. we work in the whole of Africa. Okay. Um, many projects in East Africa and West Africa. Right. Yeah. So just knowing what do people like, what do they mm. buy, you know. Yeah. Uh, which brands are selling? What's the market share? Okay. Yeah. And this is based on the client that comes up and approaches you and tells that this is the product that we're trying to push. Um, yeah, it's completely to... yeah, completely client driven. Okay. <laughs> I love that. And now, of course, you are a blogger as well. Yes, yes. I am a blogger. Blogger, blogger. Sorry. <laughs> Tell us a Not yet a blogger. Okay. <laughs> and also not yet i like the fact that you said yet maybe yeah. it's something that you plan or intend to getting into yeah, yeah in the long run right yeah. all right so tell us a little bit about your blogging all right so i started a blog called pendo talk yes and pendo talk is all about family and relationships okay so pendo talk um what i do is that i look for people who have inspiring stories couples who have something that we can learn from okay and i interview them and i use that to like guide people oh, wow. and i also have um i usually have chris hart on the blog okay. so anyone who has a query chris hart is a relationship expert yes. so anyone who has a query they send it to him and he oh, wow. responds to them oh. Wow. Yeah, so in addition to that, we also have like a link of counselors. Yeah. So anyone who needs to get linked up to a, you know, family or marital therapist, yes. mediator, psychiatrist, yeah. we have a network, so we link them. Oh my gosh, yes. that is amazing because there's so many people who need that, especially yeah. now, um, I don't know, how are your stories? Do you have any, is it all just good stories? Do you have bad experiences that you put on the blog as well? Because I feel like those are not really touched much on yeah, yeah yeah that's very true that's actually what i'm trying to do more of now yes, yeah. because there's been too much of like the positive stories which exactly. of course at the end of the day i'm not trying to send the message that oh my god marriage is scary don't go there right <laughs> but, right <laughs> but it's important for people to know you know the reality of some of exactly. the things that happen yeah. and, and know that they can get out of it and you know it's not the end of the world exactly so i'm trying to do a bit more of a focus on that and that's actually how i got the idea of bringing counselors on board yes because i would get some people um 
bringing issues like sending me emails or right. kind of talk and there were issues which you know I felt myself I'm not in a position to address them and assist them exactly. so I decided to bring in you know experts yes who can who be them. able to yeah. assist them professionally yes. which is usually very important and of course these sessions can be continued thereafter even if they get one advice it's, it's also a plug-in for the you know for the counselors to be able to say now you can come in for the session yes right exactly. so it works on your platform in that also now these psychologists can get to market themselves yes in some sort of way right? yeah exactly we give <laughs> right. them clients so. exactly right that <laughs> yeah. works perfectly yeah. all right now now what got you to, um, sorry, I'm, I'm just going to ask one last question and then Chef will be telling you what we're making. Sorry about that. What got you into um, blogging about relationships? Was it through past experiences? Was it through hearing friends, you know, always talking about relationships and this and that? And it's usually one of our core topics when you meet up with the girls. You yes. Know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So what got you into that? Uh, I love love. Oh, wow. so do I. I'm in love with love. I'm in love with love, exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. So I really love love, and yeah. I think it, it's it's becoming sad, you know, when you hear people talking yeah. so negatively about yeah. what's happening out there. Right. And I wanted to bring back that positivity about exactly. relationships and yeah. show people, you know, what it's actually beautiful. Yeah. So that's what inspired me. You see, when we see in the news all these stories of. You know, there was a love triangle, oh someone was killed, yes. I don't know, someone cut mm. off, I don't know. Huh? So yeah. <laughs> it started becoming scary right. and because love is something I'm so passionate about, I decided to do something about right. it. Right, and and it actually <laughs> exists. You know, I feel like people's experiences have, have completely tarnished their thought about love and how it should be, both men and women. Yes. Uh, but it does exist and it can be beautiful, yes. right? All right, so Chef, what are we making um, today? Okay, so today we're doing two kinds of soup. Right. First one, we're going to make a tomato bisque. Oh my gosh. And Did you just say tomato? I'm kidding. And that sounds delicious. I'm kidding, chef. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, Leo. <laughs> and the second one, we're going to do a potato leek soup. Oh my, wow, that's that's delicious. I love okay. potatoes and leeks um, mm -hmm. together. Yeah. And of course, because of the fact that we always have to have something desserty for my side, mm -hmm. we're going to make sort of what, um, a smoothie, uh, but so you can have this for breakfast, you can have it as a, as a cold soup, you mm -hmm. can have it, you know, uh, as a meal, mm -hmm. because I feel like it packs a lot of nutrients yeah. in there, and right? The spinach up. Exactly, mm -hmm. with the spinach in there as well, but you're barely going to taste that, yeah, right? Of All right, so we're going <laughs> to ask you to kindly wash your hands. Right. right, because you will be joining us uh, in making these delicious soups. Uh, what are some of your favorite soups to have? I absolutely, absolutely love, love um, the brisk that um, is made from seafood. So like the, uh, yeah, ex the lobster brisk, which is my favorite chef makes. I love that. And of course, mushroom soup as well. I yeah. love mushroom, a good mushroom soup. But chef, there's Maybe also one, one that you made here. Go ahead, join us. There's also one that you made here that you can store, the one with the curry paste. Ah, uh, the chicken. The chicken, oh yeah. Yeah, the Thai Gosh. chicken soup. Yeah. The Thai chicken soup, that one has to top the list. <laughs> Honestly, and you guys can learn how to make it by simply going on to YouTube. That's Ebru TV Hot Plate. Just to see the step-by-step -step preparation mm. on this soup. Absolutely. All right. So, okay. Trisha, please. What, um, Chef, what do you need her to help you okay, with Okay, so there? we're just going to dice some... Celery, celery. All right, mix. now, right. Chef, I can mm. see that you've taken out the um, leaves of the celery. Mm. That way. Uh, and, and, and this can, it's a very, very, uh, I feel like, perfumey leaf yeah. in the sense that it can dominate a meal Absolutely. depending on how much you take yeah. it. Celery can take over the meal and be like, you know what, it's a mm. celery soup and no longer a tomato soup. Uh -huh. So how much should they put in there? Okay, so this will starting with the potato leek. Right. First, since we have it at a while so we're going to cut the leeks some celery and then we're going to start uh, sauteing them okay. for up to five minutes right. add the potatoes in and then we'll finish up with some chicken or beef stock whichever you like then just let it boil at the as even okay and then now we'll blend them later on all right yeah. do you cook i do cook right um, I don't do such fancy stuff in my house. <laughs> I should probably fancy, start. Like yeah. I'm learning now. I'm going to go and try all these recipes. <laughs> What's your go-to meal at home? Um, I think the best and easiest for me is grilled chicken. <laughs> it's yeah. easy to do, and I'm good at doing it. So yeah, that's a common meal for me: grilled chicken, fried rice. I am with you on that, especially with the grilled chicken, is because there's so many different styles. Yeah. 
Do I have it like literally? Mm. My kids are always like, Mommy, chicken, again. <laughs> and I'm like, please, 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 I'll make for you some chabodondo here. But who can complain about chicken? It's I chicken. Know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I make it a lot. <laughs> I, make it, I make it a lot. It's like the simplest thing to make. Yeah. You literally just, I always just marinate it, pop it into the oven with the potatoes or the sweet potatoes. And I don't have to do anything. And you get what so I mean? It's so yummy, yeah. I, like, I just put it out of the oven and serve them yeah i don't have to stand korogain frying and whatnot yeah mm-hmm. timing egg timing you know, timing, you know? <laughs> i just wait for it to get ready and that's it we eat <laughs> all right now chef mm. um so i'm with you on that with the grilled chicken all right so you said that you're gonna need to first cook the condiments yes before we make it into a soup mm. now are there people who or are there soup recipes that you blend first and then cook uh depends right yeah, it depends like oh, but but most of them you have to cook them first like of course the mushroom you have to cook right uh, right right so like maybe you give me an example of what, what, what i don't know that? i'd love to try just one like i literally just blend everything in there like brrr. like you know the way you make chilies <laughs> yeah you make chili so you make kind of like a soup in that same style uh-huh. that you're blending everything and you let it boil and sit and let all those flavors just cook up yeah, but, but, but for chili it's good you boil the chilies first right just to remove the the oils and everything is that right yeah. no you blend it first and then you cook it no like okay fine like, you boil them with the, the chilies yeah so that's one of those dry ones right you, you boil before. them you yeah boil them first it is on the right and then now you boil it with that liquid yes yeah that would or it's sorry we've just gone food food topic yeah. <laughs> all right back, back to our guest here now i tell us one of the one of your stories that you've written on your blog, and of course you guys can be able to check out her pages and read some of the stories that are on there. What is one story that you can say touched you in a way that, you know, you're just like, wow, that happens in this world? Um, I would say the story of Caesar, this right. Dr. Caesar and his wife Anne. Right. And they have a family, they have six children. <laughs> <laughs> And what inspired me so much, actually how I ended up getting him is because he's a well-known person in the professional world. Okay. He was the MD of Sotini. Right. So um, hearing him talking about his wife so much, you know, we had gone for a career talk, but he kept mentioning this, his wife. the role that his wife has played in his life. Yes. And I had never had that when I have like right. career talks before, right. way when I was much younger. Right. So I was really interested in saying, wow, like this person really acknowledges, you know, what she's done in his life. Exactly. So when I interviewed the couple, it was interesting to see how much Anne has sacrificed, right. you know, for, for Caesar to be ahead in his career. Oh, but wow. what's beautiful about it, you know, is that he truly appreciates that because I think there are a lot of women who do make sacrifices for their partners. Yes. But maybe Know, the appreciation may not is be is never given. Quite. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shout out to all the ladies at home who were never appreciated. Don't worry, keep on supporting and be in love with love. All right. Yeah. But he, without even like probing him, he'll right. always bring it up. Like yeah. my wife supports me in this. My wife has helped oh, me in this. Wow. My wife has sacrificed oh, this. Wow. So for me, it was a very beautiful story, and also having a lot of responses when right. I posted about them. A lot of people saying, "Oh my gosh, I know this couple. It's true. You they're know, like they're that. Really amazing. It's not just yeah, pretend. exactly." Exactly. It's not just pretend. Exactly. Okay. So, <laughs> chef, okay, please explain what you're doing and then tell her to do the same or something uh, that she needs to help All right. Okay, so this come for a Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you don't want to burn those things. So we're just going to dice the potatoes into cubes. Right. This is the Okay. Now, um, guys, we're basically making a potato brisk, yes? No. Soup, a potato soup? To, to, tomato. So, tomato this what? Is, this is a potato leek. Potato soup. leek soup yes. and a tomato what? Brisk. It's so funny how you decided that it's tomato, potato, potato, tomato, tomato, potato, <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, now, <laughs> we, of course, are on the topic of love. Okay, so, then. yes, we're doing savory and some sweet. Smoothie. Smoothie. Right. Okay, so, so the leeks, celery, ziko apota, you might get to see me. So we didn't want to burn our leeks. So we're just gonna add the potatoes in. Let's give it a quick mix and then we can add the stock. 
Okay, so by stock, Chef, of course, we have made stock on the show before. Yeah. Um, so basically, what you have to do is just ha add some beef cubes to some boiling hot water mm -hmm. um, or some chicken cubes. Then you have chicken stock or beef uh, stock. Yes. In any case, if you have extra bones in the house, you can boil them for hours with a little bit of salt. And you have um, your stock from your bones, chicken bones, or your um, beef bones. Meat bones, right? Yes. All right, now, Chef looks like he's pretty much almost done with that preparation, yes? As Jengengen and Ganini. The tomatoes. Tomatoes, potatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. So what are you going to do next, Chef? Okay, so we're just going to leave that to boil. Okay. And the evening. Right. We're going to give it a cover. And then we can start with our tomato. Tomato, Brisk. tomato, tomato, potato, potato, tomato, <laughs> tomato. Yeah. All right, so down to the tomatoes. Now, a lot of people uh, tend to shy away from, um, uh, what you might call it, from tomato soup. Mm -hmm. So this is one way that you can be able to do it that's going to make it absolutely delicious. Of course, yes. touching on the topic of love, it's funny how Chef has a red um, bandana today, and I'm in red, and we're talking about love. <laughs> coincidence, I think not. Uh, so, <laughs> all right, now, um, of course, you have been able to, I like the fact that you brought out the aspect of that people actually could confirm the fact that it's a couple that it is is known and it's not a facade. Now we have a lot of um, relationships that are a facade. Uh, they're fake to the eyes of of, of, of the public. Um, when in real cases, there's a lot going or not going on behind the yeah. scenes, mm -hmm. right? So um, in such cases, how are you able to tell them apart? Um, usually, I go with. <laughs> what most people are saying, like right. what most people are saying about the couple. Mm. Um, not necessarily on social media, but right. but like face to face, it. people who actually have interacted with these mm. couples, um, who, who have been with them in the times when, you know, they were not in public, right. so to say. Right. Yeah, so, but at the end of the day, um, <laughs> there's no 100% way to know. Exactly. To know what exactly happens behind closed doors. Right. But I do trust that by the time someone is coming and inspiring other people with their story, mm. that at least most of it must be true. I, I really hope that yeah. most of it must be true. And yeah. of course, there's some things that you just can't pick up, especially um, experience, how we met, you know, stuff like that, I'm sure, which is some of the aspects that mm -hmm. add on to these stories right yeah. okay i love that and um i don't know how you guys feel about um would you in fact this is a very interesting question would you be the type to put your relationship out on social media talk about it is it something that you <laughs> normally do um is it something that you'd like to share with the world just how in love you are i'm not shunning that like obviously there are those people who actually just live like that um, um and and it doesn't mean that you're less romantic even if you don't mm -hmm. right um, so I'd love to hear about you guys. What do you guys do? Do you put out your, um, you know, your, your love life in public, or do you leave that for behind the scenes? All right, we are joined by Patricia, and we're basically just making some soup. I'm about to get into mine. They're cutting up the condiments. Chef, what do you have there? Okay, so someone. slow. <laughs> no, 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 don't yeah. worry about it. You're not being timed. Your You're chef is timed. dicing in like I seconds, know. and I'm like still here. With your, with your celery. All right, now, chef, I can see the celery being put in um, yes. both of the soups. Yes. Yeah? It's so it's full have flavor. that hit at the back. Yeah. Okay. So, we have some onions here. Right. Some white onions. You can use red if you want. Mm -hmm. Uh, some garlic. I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to start with this. Okay. And then what you, the secret of this, you don't, you don't burn the garlic. We pick it, come up with another pick stew. Right. You just want the onions to be translucent. And then now you can start adding the rest of the ingredients. Okay. Yeah. So okay. we'll put the garlic last, then finish up with some stock, put the tomato, crushed tomatoes, or you, if you can buy the canned ones, it's right. our defense with it. Right. Then we'll just like just let it boil in. Yeah. We'll give it a blend, put it back. Now start adding the cream and other ingredients in. So, yeah, in yeah. there. Okay, I'm What's looking that? forward to that. Mm -hmm. All right, now uh, Patricia, you have had very many stories on your blog. Will there be a time that your story will go up? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you didn't go there. I know, right? <laughs> I just had to. <laughs> Um, I don't know. So far, I've been very private right. about my own relationship experience. Okay. Um, not because it's a bad experience, because right. I've learned right. a lot from both my bad and good experiences, but because I don't want the focus to be on me. Okay. Like, I want people to focus on, Everybody you know, else. yeah, exactly. What generally works? Like, what should we all try? Right. What, you know, 
because I feel that the moment I put the spotlight on me, then people will be looking at me, and if anything I know. is a miss, they'll be like, eh, no, we can't listen to her. Hey, so, hey, yeah. so for me, I look at it as I'm also trying to figure it out. Okay. I'm also trying to learn. So yeah. I'm one of, I look at myself as also one of my followers. Exactly. Yeah. I love so that. So we're the same. Exactly. Yeah. And would you be um, keen on making yourself anonymous when you're writing a story? Because then that way, they wouldn't necessarily you know it's you. Because I'm sure that those couples would be like, yes, this is our story, but mm -hmm. we, we don't want our name put out there. Can we be anonymous on your page? Yeah, anyone can be anonymous on my page. There are people who've written their stories yes. um, on the blog before, and I haven't mentioned that it's their story. Okay. So yeah, it's possible to be anonymous on the page. Right, so give me yeah. a call. <laughs> I'm kidding. I will right. do that. <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> will do that. <laughs> All right, now basically, guys, we are mixing up um, the white onions and the celery. Now, I mean, the smell. I love this. I yeah, love how that smells. smells so good. It does, doesn't it? Smell TV coming right up. All right, um, so we're basically just making sure that the onions are translucent. Mm -hmm. We've got yeah. our potatoes just boiling in there. You can see that it's got the celery, um, the onions as well. Uh, celery, celery, is it celery? Celery, 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 leeks. celery, celery, celery. I don't no, know. What is it? <laughs> celery, celery. Potato, potato, potato. Potato, potato, right? Mm. All right, now we've got our tomatoes. Now, chef, please tell me you're going to cook those tomatoes down. Yes. You're so gonna cook them down. Going to roughly chop them. Is it a little... Right. Ripe cups. So in fact, this is a perfect recipe when you look at your pantry and your tomatoes are going crazily ripe. Then mm. this is one of the recipes that you'll be able to use in case that you just want to get rid of those tomatoes, yeah. right? All right. Now, as chef is cutting that up, um, I'm just gonna get preparations for hours going. Uh, make sure that we have a very clean surface because we're handling fresh fruits. And we do not want anyone's tummy feeling any sort of way. All right, so I'm just going to give that a little bit of a clean. Remember when you are, this is actually one of the hacks that I use in terms of ensuring that we have proper, proper, proper hygiene is once you have things like this, like in TV but the spinach, you want to put some warm water, um, some vinegar in a bath and then dip all that in there and then rinse it with some boiled water after that so that you don't have that vinegar taste in your smoothie. But the vinegar kills any, you know, um, especially we have a lot of anti, what is it called, insecticides going on these things. Mm. So you want to be sure to make sure you clean it so much because a lot of people consume, because even after washing it with some warm water, you want to wash actually with soap. I usually wash these with soap and it, and it kills a lot of the insecticides that are used on these fruits and veggies. All right, so um, I'm gonna ask you to come closer this way because you're doing the chopping up. Um, so what we have here is some spinach. We've got about a handful or a cup of spinach. This is a baby spinach that's just gonna go in there. Again, remember I washed that with vinegar, water, just to make sure that it's absolutely clean, right? And then I'm gonna ask you to kindly chop up two bananas. It's gonna go in here as well. Um, and then what we have here is some strawberries that we're gonna clean. Um, maybe we can just use about five mm. and they're very large so they're gonna add the tart and the sweetness and the color to it as well sure. um, and then in terms of water what we're gonna use is we're gonna use this beautiful beautiful watermelon now I generally just dislike watermelon <laughs> I never understand what? them I know I'm like the one <laughs> black person who hates watermelon. No, seriously. Stereotype, stereotype, I, I, know. <laughs> I can't stand it let me tell you why it just don't make sense. These fruits just don't make sense. They don't. It's water and it's just water with sugar. <laughs> you love them because and they thrive there as well. They thrive, yeah. huh? Are they sweet? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's some times yeah, that I get that excessively sweet one. Mm. And I think that's why that oh, I just you, don't like You don't like, like the sweet one? You just want like I a little like quenching it. Ones. I like the sweet ones, but yeah. then you never ever get them consistently. Ah. It's always it depends, one yeah, is it like really, really flat. <laughs> and then the other one is like really, really sweet. So you're just like, how do you choose? And I usually see people knocking them. Yeah. Like, Come on, you're not going to know if it's sweet or not by knocking <laughs> them. It's not going to be like, I'm sweet, karibu. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I, I don't know if it's the chemicals that they use when they're GMOs. growing them. Yeah. Yeah, because like fruits are not meant to be blind.
plant and they're not meant to be bitter. Exactly. Like fruits are meant to be sweet. So the moment like this off, for me, I just feel that, uh-uh, what can we call it? Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna give this a taste because I'm pretty sure, you wanna, you wanna try this? Here, here you go, Patricia. Grab this little piece over here. I'm pretty sure just by the looks of it, this is one of those bland ones. <laughs> is it, is it, isn't it? It's kind of sweet. Kind of, you see, kind of. Yeah. I don't want to hear kind of. I just don't get these fruits, yeah. honestly. I don't get them. All right. I don't I, do you guys enjoy your, um, your watermelons? Please let me know. Honestly, I'd prefer the cantaloupes, um, which is the green ones. Mm. Those ones can also be excessively sweet and they're so juicy. Oh, oh the, my gosh, I love them. The white them. melon. Huh? The white melon. Ye yes, yeah. those ones. So oh, the okay. the is the best. No, it's fine. Don't yeah. worry. We're going to use this <laughs> for today because we, what we need is the water. Mm. Literally, in Imaji, Maji Matunda. What is it called in Kiswahili, guys? Tikiti Maji. <laughs> Really? There you go, Chef <laughs> Kumba <laughs> I was waiting for you to tell me. Uh, did you know that's what it's called? Nope. <laughs> right, all right. So, Chef, how are we going there and what's happening? Okay, so once it starts giving, getting a boil, right. we're going to season mm -hmm. with some salt and pepper. Okay. Because we're going to keep on seasoning until your soup is the best soup you've ever had. So, okay. So, we're just going to add bit by bit. All right. Yeah. Please let me have a little bit of that mm -hmm. orange that was going to go in here as well. So we've got our bananas, which are definitely going to add it to the sweetness of yep. that. We've got our uh, strawberries going on in there. Oopsie, oopsie, they're running away from me. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to peel that orange and place that in here for more sweetness. Um, and, and then we're going to give that a little bit of uh, some yogurt. This is just, we're going to put a few tablespoons of the yogurt. This is just to give it a little bit of body, a little bit of color, a little bit of depth, a little bit of health, a little bit of protein. You get the point, mm. right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's just going to go in there, some dollops of that. That's what brings out the smoothie aspect. Now, guys, if you wish to use a flavored smoothie, then it becomes less healthy. Uh, so this is a natural, unsweetened yogurt that's going in there. And then we're just going to let... Um, the yogurt, um, I mean the flavors and the sweetness of the fruit marinade in that, right? I love how you're peeling that. Did you know how to do that from before? Is this how you peel it? <laughs> Actually, I don't peel oranges. <laughs> like, this is a first time thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, like, you usually just chop them up and eat. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So, now that you use the juice, you're going to use the whole fruit. I'm going to use the whole fruit. Uh, okay. It's going to be a very dense smoothie. Mm. Very dense. You see, the reason I call it soup is because these are the ones with smoothies that you need to eat. Yeah. You can't, you're not going to drink go it. Right? Exactly. You're <laughs> going to eat it. Right? Okay. And that's why I said it can be a meal as well. Mm. Okay. So, um, I'm going to I'm gonna chop up. Actually, I'm going to grate some of this um, ginger. Mm -hmm. And this, this is going to give it just that kick. I know. Mm. Ginger and fruit would add that in there. No. Uh, but I think it goes, goes well. perfectly. It goes the, perfectly the in there. Exactly. Oh, okay. So, a little bit of ginger goes in there. Again, with the fun thing with these cold soups or smoothies is that you can get as creative as possible in terms of the ingredients, and this adds as um, you know. Oh, we should have left some bananas for decorate. Oh, we've still got one banana. Good. So we're gonna use that to decorate. Oh, it looks so it. good. Right already. already. <laughs> You're just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> can't wait to try that. All right, and then put that in there completely. Um, and then we're gonna wait for that, for that, what is it that you, the orange that you're cutting, just dump the orange in there, and we're gonna give that a little bit of a blend. And we have our soup, and then get to plating it. Now, what I normally do is put some more seasoning flavors, some, you know, some chia seeds go on there, you can put some sesame seeds, you can put some, I love nuts, you can put some nuts on there as mm. well, comes out absolutely delicious, with that crunch aspect at the back. I'll put that at the end. Uh, um, so just sprinkle that at the end as I'm plating it. I always have chia seeds in the house. They're very nutritious. Mm. And and this helps with, um, especially I put it on my oats. I put chia seeds basically on everything. <laughs> I put chia seeds in my sandwiches. I, I kid you not. <laughs> in my egg sandwiches. You know that we put black pepper on top uh, and put chia seeds on top. Get the little tiny crunches. Yeah, really exactly. Oh, yeah. it's amazing. Mm. Right? And you know, you actually can barely feel their presence. No, as in you have to go and pull at the end. Right. All right, now thank you so much, Patricia. We're gonna just dump that in there. And chef, please tell us what we're gonna be doing next. Sorry. Right, so, so this waiting as they boil. Yeah. Already put the um, tomatoes. Okay. And then the mashed kidogo. Yeah. Just to 
Arakisha your story. Mm. So now the secret behind making like a good brisk right. is rice. Okay. Uh -huh. Like making a roux, mm. like flour, oil, yeah. just to make like make it like more dense. Yeah. Right. But now we're gonna use rice instead. Uh -huh. So okay. like if if you have time, you can put like three tablespoons of rice. Mm. Cook it like for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. But since time here to upper, I pre-cooked some rice. Mm -hmm. So once we're going to blend, I'm just going to add that rice there. Nice. So, mm. That tends soup here. Okay. So rice is well, and it's not flour that goes in there, chef. No. You Why? Want it, you want it silky. You don't want it starchy. And of course, ah. I know it's only starch, but. Right. You get the drift. Right? I get the drift. All right. So we're just basically <laughs> going to blend this until it's a nice smooth paste. All right. So that's that. And what we're going to do is we are going to go on a short break and we'll be right back. So don't go anywhere. Keep it hot plate. We are back, guys. This is hot plate and it is crunch time. We're almost done. We're almost done. It is crunch time. And you know too. Huh? And you know too. And you know too. I'm glad you Okay. Did I? Okay. So, uh, up Yes, it's very different. Smell that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. I love how thick the gum, the water has even become. Honestly, yes. they're basically just ready. So the brisk is almost ready. We add a chance to reduce, which is fine. Right. Uh, we're just going to add the rice while we're going to blend it. Okay. And meanwhile, what we have here is a little bit of our, our little smoothie here, which is a bit too runny for my liking. But we shall serve it either way. Uh, and we shall <laughs> drink it. Right? Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is basically just get that cleared out completely. Mm -hmm. And then Chef will be so, um, showing us what to do next. Yes, so uh -huh. we have here some dinner rolls. Scones, mkatele. Dinner buns. Bus. So dinner we're rolls. We're going to make some croutons, which will go with our soups. Now, Chef, please tell us why soup is served with bread. Uh, <laughs> bread? <laughs> so it has to be soup. It has to be bread. It can't be uh, any. Yeah, why is it always bread? That's a good exactly. question. It yeah. goes well with salads, <laughs> though. Croutons. Croutons go well with salads. Also. Great. Like the Caesar salad. Does anyone ever serve, like, none with soup? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. see now that, that sounds good. Talking, yeah. Right? That sounds amazing. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is just gonna cut them into get a knife. And Great. Just cut them into two quarters. Uh-huh. And then we're just gonna coat them with some olive oil, mm. some black pepper. Mm. Such as blue cut. <laughs> some <laughs> some garlic powder. Right. And some parmesan. And then we put them in the oven. She get us the toasty. Great. Then we can serve with our soup. All right, so basically what I'm doing is just plating this little bad boy here. And what I'm going to do is just put little droplets like that around the whole bowl. And I love how um, the yogurt just naturally just stays put on the, on the soup or on the, um, what you might call it, mm. on our little um, smoothie there. Mm. And then I'm just going to grab that knife that we had. I hope it's going to work. I don't know if it is. You can use a toothpick, it's usually better. And then just run, it's not supposed to have these bubbles, guys. The bubbles are just taking over. They're just, whatever in my progress, I'm like, what is this bubbles doing? No, oh, look, we're in love with love. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, it's not even working. Anyway. So what we're gonna do is just gently, because of the fact that it's super duper runny, we're just gently gonna place these strawberries right on top, okay. right? And help that to float. A chef, please explain what it is that you're doing okay. now. So bread, mm -hmm. some olive oil, you can use butter if you have, right. margarine, mm -hmm. uh, some garlic powder, some parmesan, some pepper, yeah. I'm just going to make everything Oh my gosh. I know. That's so much nicer than just the regular bun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're adding more flavor to it. There you go. So we're in just going to put that in the, to in, the, in the grill. Kashika is the toast and then we can serve with that. Alright, now I'm basically just finishing off with some chia seeds. Like I told you, I put chia seeds in literally everything. Mm. And they're so healthy. They have so many um, health benefits. You guys can read about it all by yourself. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do <laughs> is, is um, basically just put a dollop of honey in there. Um, if you have more runny honey, you can just, you know, run it through. Uh, but I'm just going to put a dollop because mine is like the really 
really, really, really authentic honey, so it's very coarse mm -hmm. and thick. Um, but in any case, this is just to add that touch of sweetness. You can, of course, just drizzle it just to make it look better. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing it. I want to plate another one, but I'm just doing it for the purpose of her getting to taste this, get a little bit of everything, right? Um, I hope it's good. <laughs> it's it looks way good. lighter. It's way lighter than um, than it, it, I intended it to be. That's mm -hmm. Just make sure you get a little bit of the honey. Go ahead. Have a seat. Yay! Right. Tell us what you think. If it's something that you would have in terms of the soup, um, in terms of a smoothie, in terms of packing it in a bottle and taking it with you to work. Um, yeah. Let us know what you think. Get a little bit of the honey, a little bit of the chia, a little bit of the strawberry. Yeah, I want to get a little. And get the everything. honey as well. It's right there. It's right here. It's right here. There you go. <laughs> Yay! Mmm, this is actually really good. It is? Mm. Yeah, yeah, you get a little bit of the crunch from the chia as well. Yeah. I really love that they form their own. Yeah, um, by the way, it makes such a big difference. Like, it gives it, I don't know what, the texture. Like, right. Like, really and great. if you have nuts, guys, drop that in there. Go absolutely creative with what you need to get creative with. Um, and have fun with that. Add all the ingredients that you intend on having. Yum. <laughs> Go crazy. Just dig this in, is dig good. in. Is it? <laughs> All right, now, Chef, what we have here and what are we doing next? Okay. I'm going to have some of that soup. Mm, another test to another chumvi. Right. Oh, <laughs> okay. oh you're saying me. No, I'm having some of this one. Uh, okay, so, uh -huh. so uh, we have the soup here. Right. So we're going to add a couple of tablespoons of rice. Mm -hmm. Add the ill consistency in the data. Mm -hmm. If you want it too runny, mm -hmm. I'm chatting a little too heavy. Mm -hmm. Add rice. So, since it's hot, don't mm -hmm. I'm gonna hold it down because it explodes. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, we're just gonna start with a blitz. All right, um, now that is basically the consistency we have. And back into the pot it comes. I feel like this is going to add the color, the, the texture. Rice, the rice, it may change color. And yeah, it's changed the color, but it's uh, also going to cook through. It's going to make it thicker, yes? Yes. So we what is that? Some cream. Some cream is going to go in there. Oh, I actually forgot my mom's pumpkin soup, how delicious it is. Butternut soup, this, it, it kind of reminds me of that as well. I used to put celery just to add that kick. So you're going to have that kick of celery at the so back and then the cream. Look, it's person. thickening oh now gosh. because of the rice and the cream. Look at how beautiful and silky that looks. Doesn't it look amazing? It looks amazing. The right. rice and the roux. And the roux, yeah. yeah there's the such a big difference. difference. Yeah. That's what we were looking for. Oh my gosh, chef. And the good thing about this now, guys, it is the cold season is coming in. So what you can do with it is you can literally serve your serving, freeze it, and all you have to do is defrost it and warm it, and you can enjoy soup at any time of the day, mm -hmm. right? Does it taste the same? It does. Like after defrosting? Oh, yes, yes, it does. You don't think so? No. You see, because, it's, okay, maybe the potato one wouldn't, right? Mm -hmm. But the tomato one, <laughs> potato, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, sorry. <laughs> Um, the tomato one probably does, mm. and, and and a lot of the ones with the chilies and the, if you make like a chicken broth or, yeah, yeah, or yeah, soup, mm -hmm. it won't taste the same. Ah. In fact, I think it will even taste better because what happens is the is the flavors marinate longer. Ah. Have you never eaten food or like a curry the next day? Like if you, oh, yeah. it's, the, it's it way better, better. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the same case. It's the same case. Right? All right. So I'll freeze all that for myself. Yes. <laughs> and go with this. <laughs> No problem. We don't mind, guys. All right, now, um, this is what I cannot wait to taste. Look at the color on that. Oh, my gosh. It looks absolutely amazing. Oh, you had tasted some earlier, had you? Yeah, I had. I'm definitely going to try Without the cream, it's really good. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to try that right now. It's hot. Oh, oh. Good. That's so good. <laughs> Chef, this is so good. Okay, yeah, I don't know about I don't know about you freezing and carrying it anymore. Ah, <laughs> it's mine. Alright, and of course, if you're just joining us, we have been in the kitchen with Patricia, uh, touching on the topics of love and her blog. And of course, making some delicious soups. Okay, Chef is just about to blend <laughs> us some more, so let's get to that and then. All right, now, guys, this is a consistency. It almost looks like baby food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's actually really good. Let me get this, sorry. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to plate that. Now, Chef, the potato one does not go back in there. No. All right. So, um, it's too thick. Mm -hmm. it's okay. Some stock. Right. Yeah. And that's that. Yeah. It's uh, consistent to not happen. Okay. Now, uh, Patricia, please have a seat because now comes our favorite part, which we get to serve you um, the Yay. soups and you get to try that. We're going to clear this for you. <laughs> Let me rinse this spoon for you. And you get to taste it, right? All right. Now, um, I know this is something that I know we've touched a lot on the love aspect and, and a little, very little on the research aspect. Um, I know there's a lot of when it comes to research, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Yeah. And this is questioning people and going out into the market, you know, basically putting yourself out there to get as much information as possible. Um, what are some of the challenges that a lot of researchers face in terms of getting information willingly, people willingly giving you information? I think that's the, that's that's the challenge the right there. Yeah. <laughs> people willing to give you information and right. give you like accurate information. Right. Yeah. And most of the time it's because of the fact that they know it's, it's all to do with competition. So they're not going to give you the accurate, um, you know, numbers or the accurate information in terms, in terms of the questions that you ask. Yes. Yeah, especially with consumers, there tends to be a fear with um, revealing, like, let's say, your income status, right. your social level. So right. such questions are usually very sensitive. So you have to be very smart about how you go about asking okay. them so that right. you can actually get what's accurate yeah yeah all right i i actually want to be talking to you a little bit about that but before that look at those croutons oh, baby i'm gosh. just like yes <laughs> yes 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 i'm gonna grab one sorry chef i just went ahead and helped myself to one. Oh wow oh wow you have that garlic kick in is it always necessary to have it with bread because sometimes i just enjoy my soup as is like for the bite, okay, I'm gonna put a little dollop of cream. Right, you, you knew what I was gonna do, right? <laughs> you saw it coming, I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna do my thing right now. Right, hold on. Yeah, it's yogurt. I put cream, okay. The same difference, it's fine. Yogurt would have worked just fine. <laughs> you disagree, you're just like, no, put cream. He doesn't want yogurt to be right? <laughs> It's like, you're not gonna change the flavor of this at all. All right, then. All right, now basically, um, we have both our soups ready. Remember, guys, soups are meant to be, this one in specific is meant to be enjoyed hot. Yes, chef, if you cool it down, especially the potato one, then it changes the consistency and changes the flavor as well. Um, in any case, I feel like this one is going to work with the dollops so perfectly. Okay, okay. As soon as I get the dollops <laughs> off. <laughs> and then... Um, and then I'll show you what it is that I was trying with the other one that disappointed me um, because of the bubbles. Now, guys, I I don't know how how do you usually eat your soups when they're when they're super hot? Yeah, like fresh from the pot. Fresh from the pot, yeah. Uh, but I always tend to make sure that I get the the scoops that are around the plate because oh. they're the coolest <laughs> ones, and then work your way in the middle. That way, you don't. I've burnt myself a couple of times with soups and tea. Especially tea. I used to watch uh, my late grandmother just drinking tea, and I used to think that it's very cool until I sip it, and I'm <laughs> numb for my tongue is numb for the rest of the week. <laughs> so I learned to always start with the, you know, with the your way round the edges because the plate, um, the temperature of the plate has cooled down the soup and has made your soup a lot warmer. All right, so chef, I can see you did not put the croutons on this one. Thank you for not doing so. Uh, because then you want to be able to make a choice uh, of uh, they both go well with the croutons, right? But in the case that you 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 know you could just you know you know look at that right? How beautiful oh my is gosh. that? There we have it. A time of the truth moment. In a twenty You understand moment what I mean? Of truth. Yes, moment of truth. <laughs> uh, we're about to get to sampling the soup. So which one do you want to start with? Um. <laughs> the tomato root. Okay, the tomato root. All right, so go ahead. Be oh. careful. Remember my little yeah. trick. Start oh, with yeah. the sides that oh, have yeah. cooled down <laughs> from the plate, right? And that way you won't have your tongue burning. And let us know what you think. Oh my gosh, absolutely delicious. Oh 
Oh my gosh, it's really good. It's really good, it's right? It's really good. <laughs> Honestly, it's so yeah, good. Yeah, it's so good. You should try it with seafood. I know, yeah. right? Can you imagine having some seafood, some prawns yeah. in there, some mm. more fish? Oh my gosh, that would be some ah. lobster would be delicious. Mm. I am so going to make this and freeze it. Like, this is really, really uh, good. But that one is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you're just like, uh, let's just discuss this. All right, I want you to try uh, the next one. Mm. As I also grab mm. my, the which is my potato one. Ah. Mm. Oh, with the crouton, yes. right? Okay, but okay. Just, just get. I don't know if it. I can like. I know exactly. That's what I was thinking. You can, you can break, break it now. Break, so it, break it down. Absorb, right. absorb, absorb. This so is a potato one. You can, yeah, you can break it. Oh, break it. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 Right. Mm. Mm. Okay, this is my fave. Right? Yeah. yeah. Told you we had a winner. <laughs> yeah. The potato one is really, really yeah. good. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Patricia. I hope you enjoyed the soup. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed it <laughs> and I'm taking it all home with me. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you guys, make sure you check out her blog uh, in terms of some of the stories that she's put out. And if you have a story you'd love her to put out, reach out to her. I'm sure she'd love that, right? Yeah, yes. I would. All right, yeah. guys. And thank you for tuning in here on Hot Plate and yet another amazing episode. We are are out and of course enjoy making some of these meals and send us those pictures as well we'd love to see them that is it from here on hot plate i'm claire karatu and i'm chef bennett have a lovely evening oh. good night guys